The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Jesus went about in all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers to his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them the authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These, these 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, no two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet and leave that house or town. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, and the testimony of them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brothers will betray brother to death and father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, in the gospel lesson that we just heard from Matthew, uh, Jesus is doing his best to motivate the 12 disciples to go out into the world and to spread God's love. Jesus sees the crowds of people in villages and towns and, com and compares them to sheep without a shepherd. He encourages the 12 to go out and to find the lost sheep while proclaiming the good news, and he empowers them to cure the sick, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. He has been teaching and leading them right up into this moment, doing his best to, to prepare the twelve for the time when he will be gone. This past week, like Pastor Heather said, we had Vacation Bible School here at APLC, and as you can see by our wonderful balloon tree that we have up here, uh, the theme this week was Tree of Healing. And through stories, Bible passages, songs, arts and crafts, science, snacks, and games, we're able to spread God's love 
and learn about healing our mind, body, and soul. I would like for you to just take a moment and think about the first time that you ever shared your faith with someone. Who was it? Why did you do it? I know for some people, a specific time in your life probably comes immediately to mind. But for others, this question might be a little harder to answer. And I, I can honestly say the first time that I remember sharing my faith with someone was when I was really young. My mom would call me her, her fisher of men. I was her little evangelist because I would always invite my friends to come to church with, with my family. And in the summertime, our church always had vacation Bible school. And I really wanted to invite our next door neighbor, Colby. Now, uh, during the summer, my sister and I would love to go to our neighbor's house and play because they had a really big backyard and a trampoline and two big dogs. And the coolest thing that I thought they had was this new thing called a VCR. Now, um, for you young people, a VCR is like an old version of a Blu-ray player. Now, for you uh, really young people, a Blu-ray player <laughs> plays movies. And now you, how you just are able to digitally download them. Well, back then, we couldn't do that. So I thought it was really cool that you could just watch movies in your house. And I remember being over there, and throughout the summer, we watched Star Wars and Indiana Jones. And I was just amazed that you could do that in your own living room. And I remember going home and telling my mom and dad, I was like, I don't know, the neighbors must be rich because the movie theaters just give them movies for them to be able to take home and watch. I was like, it's amazing. And uh, the rest of that week, uh, the rest of that week, we started to go to vacation Bible school and Colby went with us. And I remember that year, it was like a barnyard theme. And uh, one of the days we had a bunch of animals that came to the church and uh, we, they were out in the courtyard kind of animals that like Mary and Joseph would have had uh, possibly in the manger. And uh, looking back on this situation, I'm sure this was kind of a traveling um, petting zoo that they used at county fairs or birthdays. But for me as a little kid, my eyes were wide open and I was amazed. I was like, all of these cool animals are here in the courtyard and we were able to feed them and pet them and learn about them. And all that week, we, we sang songs, and, and we played games, did arts and crafts, and we learned about Jesus and how he died for our sins. And my sister and I did this all with our neighbor Colby, and we had a blast. Children and youth are quick to invite friends and relatives to many church activities. And our VBS this past week was no different. I would estimate that over half of the participants that we had this year at Vacation Bible School are not members of our congregation. Many of them are friends, neighbors, or grandkids visiting grandparents for the summer. And I'm sure some of them, for some of them, this might have been their first taste of church and experiencing God's grace. Hopefully that seed of faith might have been planted in their heart this past week. Maybe we even motivated some adults to actively seek out a place where their family can, conti can continue to grow in their faith journey. As one of the leaders of VBS, it is always fun to be able to see our youth and adults sharing their faith with, the, with children. Even some of the children that aren't quite sure that they want to, they want to be there that week uh, normally leave the last day with a smile on their face, wishing they could come back the next day. Our volunteers do an amazing job surrounding these children with a safe place to be able to ask questions and have new experiences. One small example of, of a new experience was uh, one day our, snacks, our snack team uh, made muffins that all the children really liked. Uh, they were eating them up and many of the groups even asked for seconds and I walked into the gym about that time and and uh, they were gobbling, gobbling them up and making yummy noises and just saying, these are so good, Mike, you need to try these. And uh, at closing that afternoon, the snack team wanted me to make sure and tell the children that, they had been, that their snack that they were eating 
were pumpkin muffins that they had made and morning glory muffins made of zucchini, carrots, and coconut. And the expression on the children's faces was just priceless. They're all. <laughs> and after we dismissed, one of the third graders came up to me and was like, I can't believe you made us eat vegetables for snack. <laughs> but being able to go from group to group uh, and have children share with me their science projects or their finished bracelet that they made in arts and crafts, it's always fun and truly a blessing. Uh, Pastor Steve's son, Sam, was our photographer this week, and he did a really great job of taking pictures. Um, and if you want to see some of the images from VBS, I encourage you to go and check out our church Facebook page. There's a lot of great pictures up there from every day. Uh, our volunteers did a wonderful job and really made Vacation Bible School truly special. One of the things that we concentrated on this year was we wanted to support some of our, our mission partners with all of our Vacation Bible School offerings. Uh, one day we collected money to put towards building a clean water well for water to thrive. Uh, we collected canned goods for the San Antonio Food Bank. Our kids brought in teddy bears for the Children's Bereavement Center. And the last day we gathered up socks for people staying at Haven for Hope. All of these items will be given out to the community and going towards helping serve others in need. And really this was done on purpose so that our young people realize that living your faith happens every day out in the world. It's not just here in this building on Sundays. As I said before, children and youth are not shy about sharing their faith with friends and inviting them to worship and youth ministry activities. But something happens in our late 20s, and for some reason, we stop inviting people to come to church. Take a moment and think about when was the last time you invited someone to come to worship? Maybe a church picnic, a talent show, or any other activity here at APLC. If it's hard to, to remember, then it's probably been too long. I've been blessed to have a number of shepherds in my life, helping guide me through good times and bad times. My parents, grandparents, sisters, teachers, coaches, pastors, and other mentors have shaped my life in many ways that they will never even know. All of them have helped mold my faith, and I can honestly say that it probably all circles back to Vacation Bible School. I hope and pray that you find motivation to be a shepherd for someone here in the near future. Don't be afraid to share your faith with a friend, a neighbor, or maybe even a stranger. We all have the ability to be evangelists. You never know. Your smiling face and an invite to come to worship might be the only thing keeping someone from knowing about God's love and grace. Amen.